Happy Tuesday, everybody out there in No Brush Land. My name's Tamara Grant, and my co host Barb Reed and I are super excited to invite you. Four. Let me just find you, Barb. Oh, you're there. All How right. did I come on so fast? <laughs> I was actually, actually I was like, you were there. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Something. Yeah. How are you today? I'm pretty good. How about you? I'm, I'm doing pretty well. It's it's a good week so far. It's already it feels like the whole week's gone by in a day and a half. I don't know what's oh. been going on this week. <laughs> I, I can't say the same thing for me, but uh, oh, you've been having Groundhog Day with your panels, right? Yeah, which is it's it's lying to my left, flat on the table in a the disgraced position right now. So oh. hey, look at everybody's here. Hi Douglas. Hi Rena. That was fast. Did I see everybody's on fast today? Hmm. Kathleen, tell us where you're from. We're both from Canada, eh? Hey. <laughs> and it's um, a big it's, excitement in Canada these days. <laughs> we're, oh, we're the is it ever a big excitement in Canada? Did you just see the the um, the thing that got lifted? So they they're getting rid of the PCR tests for coming back to Canada after travel abroad. The government just oh. announced it, like just now. Hey, Seattle, okay, eh? And Atlanta, eh? And England, <laughs> eh? All the A's there. Lots if of you A's. don't know what A is, it's an apostrophe E-H. It's a Canadian thing. We don't really say it. If you yeah, can count how many we times do. we say it in conversation, <laughs> let us know. <laughs> I think we say it. I say it, speaking for myself. Okay. I do say it okay. a lot. I think I say um more than I say A. So there you go. <laughs> or hey, today, Jeepers, today yeah. we have another guest with us. We've been having mm -hmm. lots of guests which is great. Um, this week, we have uh, a UK artist whose name is Sue Balmer. And I think a lot of you will know her through Louise Fletcher, Find Your Joy. That's how she and I met. We were trying to figure out where we knew each other from because you know how it is out there in the internet world. We just kind of feel like we all know each other and we forget where that all started mm -hmm. from. But a lot of our viewers will know her because of her sketchbook work. She does the most amazing sketchbooks and she shared them on her Instagram before. Uh, and her beautiful, bright, bold, saturated, hey, Palm Springs, eh? Yeah, I was, I was kind of chuckling when that came by. <laughs> you go ahead and chuckle. I'm going to grab her. I think she's in the green room waiting, in our green room, eating all the red M&Ms. <laughs> I forgot you to know, load those. Shoot. You know how rock stars do that, right? Like Bon Jovi eats the red M&Ms. Hi, Sue. Welcome. Hello. Hey, Sue. <laughs> Hi, Hi, so nice to meet you. Nice to oh, meet you. you. haven't met Sue meet Barb. Barb meets Ooh. Sue. Everybody Hello. meets Sue. <laughs> <laughs> what time is it where you are? So it's just gone 7 p.m. and it's okay. dark outside and it's quite cold and it's quite miserable this evening. It's been a bit of a wet, blustery day and I just saw the weather forecast before I came up to oh. the studio and it looks like we've got a few storms on the way over the next few days. Okay. So still not not spring yet. It's no still spring. in the winter. <laughs> and you're in Nottingham, Nottinghamshire? Yes, yeah, so that is okay. right in the centre of, it's right in the Midlands, um, and we're near okay. Sherwood Forest, so it's the land of Robin Hood. Oh, okay. Oh, I was at yeah. the University of Nottingham once about 30 years ago at an academic conference, and we actually, I think we went on a, like a little river cruise, or those boats that you can take through the river, the canal, I'm oh, not sure. Yeah. On the lake, yes, yeah. yeah, so on the, lake. the university the lake. that I went to, okay. and I was possibly even there 30 years ago. <sighs> well, so that fits because you and I seem to be like in lockstep lately with all sorts of different things. Um, you guys, no brushers know that I've it kind of embarking on this joy of missing out year. I'm not signing up for everything that comes by. And it turns out I posted about that and Sue had posted she was doing the same thing and we were also, uh, I think both of us had newsletters where we talked about look back to leap forward or look back to look ahead or something. So yeah. <laughs> we're kind of on this same brainwave, which is really interesting when that happens. We're aligned, aren't we? We're we are aligned. on the same kind of traje trajectory. Mm -hmm. um, and we seem to be kind of the same things seem to be cropping up for us at similar times, which is really interesting. And it's nice as well, because it's great that somebody else is going through a similar thing. So you can kind of share ideas and have a bit of a chat on the side in Instagram. And it's, yeah, it's really good to know that you're not alone, I think. Yeah. yeah. Well, so for our viewers who don't know you, can you give us a little bit of backstory about 
you know, how you came to art, what your day job is and how that feeds into your art practice. Yeah. I know about it, but they might not. I don't yes. even know about it. Yeah. This would be good. You're going to find out. Ooh. Okay. I'll try you do an abridged version because it, it just seems the story gets longer and longer. Um, but I started off, I did my original training at the University of Nottingham in pharmacy. So that is my first, was my first degree. And I worked as a pharmacist for quite a lot of years before I started to get a little bit, uh, not bored, but just a bit dissatisfied. And I'd always really enjoyed art at school. And I thought it would be really nice to go back in my 30s and do um, a foundation course, which I did. I did that part time while I was still working as a pharmacist. And that kind of led to me thinking about, should I go back to uni and do like an illustration degree or a fine art degree? But I decided to um, just spend the time uh, that I would have invested in that just teaching myself. So I just kind mm -hmm. of spent three or four years exploring, trying to find out what kind of direction I wanted to go in, what kind of art I preferred. And I ended up making all the things. So I was like doing printing, <laughs> then I do a bit of textiles and then I do some watercolours. And I, I was just, I guess, testing the water to try and find out what it was that I really liked. Mm -hmm. And I ended up meeting a fantastic bunch of people in a creative business course and that led me to um, launch my first art business which is very different to the art that I produce now but it's black and white illustrative really detailed um, I enjoyed doing it at the time but I, just, I lost interest I think because it wasn't the art that was Aww. coming from the inside it was more of right. like a, I'd been advised to do this because it would be more commercial Mm -hmm. I did that for a few years and then kind of lost interest and I used to blog and I used to do everything kind of like I'm doing now but I, I did lose interest and just took a good few years off and in that time I had the um well it was the good fortune really to be contacted by somebody I'd worked with as a, in a mentor mentee capacity mm -hmm. while I was doing my original art business and she was training to be a life coach and through that so I was still making art but just kind of dabbling I knew that I was more into landscapes and that I wanted to be a bit more expressive but I was really didn't quite know how to do it um so I started to work with Rebecca Kirk who's an amazing um okay. business creative well life coach I suppose mm -hmm. and through the whole process of working with her I then um distilled my key interests and passions and skill set and it was to do with creativity and health so nice. through that, I discovered um, the profession of art therapy and I realised that they did it at Derby, which is only 30 odd miles away. So that's mm -hmm. in the Midlands as well. And I just kind of on a bit of a whim, really, I was like, that seems like a good idea. I think I want to do art therapy. Found out a little bit more about it. And then so for age 45, I think I was, went back to uni. <laughs> I Yay. Just trained. Um, <laughs> And through that whole process of going back to uni and in, investing myself in this art therapy course, it takes you on a bit of a journey. So you've got to be in personal therapy as well while you're doing your training. But okay. you, um, you also delve into your own work and think more deeply about what it is that you're making and why these marks appeal. And oh, that wow. kind of put me through this like so I'm moving from this very structured illustrative work and I want to be big and bold and colorful right. and how do I do it and why do I want to do it and that kind of in a nutshell brought me to where I am now so I qualified in 2019 and started to look for a job but um that was just as lockdown happened and all of the opportunities that I had laid out and the contacts that I'd made it all dried up because everything just went dead so that is when yeah. I met you on Louise Fletcher's Find right. Your Joy course and that was the course that really I've done a couple of courses before that but that was the course that really gave me the oomph to mm -hmm. take the next steps and be a bit it helped me to find my joy um, right. And yeah. I guess now I'm just refining that process and finding my voice and finding mm -hmm. finding what I'm really passionate about. And it Ooh. changes, doesn't it, Sue? <laughs> no, I'm just listening. Like your journey has been so interesting and, and um, like very fascinating to listen to. But it changes, I would think, 
what we're interested in for a couple of years might morph into something completely different uh, later. Yeah, and that, that definitely did happen to me. It was yeah. through, I think through, prompted by the studies and we had a studio module where it was all about our creative self, side of ourselves. Mm -hmm. So it was, we had, it was very much focused on the artwork at Derby, which was one of the brilliant things about the course. It was about the image that was right. the focus. And we focused on our image and and we delved really deep. And it was, I've just mm -hmm. been reading today some of my old studio notes from when I was at uni and all of the same kind of um, issues of like, I'm a this, I'm a that. Mm -hmm. Can you be both at the same time? They're all cropping up and this, and I'm feeling stuck. And so mm -hmm. I've noticed this re repetitive cycle that mm -hmm. I seem to go yeah. through. Um, yeah. that's kind of working its way out at the moment. You're well, not alone. And, that, <laughs> and, and that fits really, really nicely because I, uh, we're only three days into the 100 day project and you and I talked before about how we weren't going to do it. And then you decided to do it. You came, I'm going to say full circle because there you go. Because <laughs> she's working on 100 days of circles. I don't know if anybody has seen what she's been posting the last few days, but it's your work, but it's now in circle form. And so um, you could talk a little bit about why circles. Yeah. Yeah. Um, who? why circles? Well, I definitely came a full circle to mm -hmm. this decision because initially when we were both talking about the fear of missing out and we were transforming that and we were determined to embrace the joy of missing out, I was absolutely not. I'm not doing this big art course that's coming up. I'm not doing the 100 day project. I'm just going to opt out and I'm going to please myself. And then I didn't really think anything more of it. The reason I decided I didn't want to do the 100 day project because other people had told me, you'll learn a lot, you'll make a lot of contacts, you know. Um, the reason I decided not to do it originally was because I didn't think I would be able to do it every single day. So I couldn't mm -hmm. do it properly in my mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's a big so commitment. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. what's the point then if I can't do it every day? So I just shut, shut it off, I shut all that possibility off. And then the day before it started, I was on Instagram, as you are, scrolling through, and I <laughs> noticed a couple of posts. I'm like, yeah, that starts tomorrow. I'll just have a little look. And then I read somebody else's post. Yeah. I can't even rem remember whose post it was, but somebody else had posted about doing it and not doing it every single day. And I just thought, that actually makes sense. Why don't I embrace because I'm a bit of a perfectionist or tr a recovering perfectionist, I should say. <laughs> um, how about maybe I will learn something if I decide to do it imperfectly. So that mm -hmm. kind of changed my mind quite quickly. And I mm -hmm. thought, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm also working with a creative business coach at the moment. Um, this wonderful mm -hmm. um, woman that I met through the Connected Artists Club, which Tamara and I are both members of. Um, and I met her through that she's called Helen Conway and we've only worked together for a short t period of time but she asked me some questions a lot of questions that got me to think about things that are inside that still need expressing mm -hmm. and through that process I thought back to the circles I thought back to this idea that I'd had it while I was doing my uni studies about how can you be two different things at the same time how can you be um a pharmacist and an art therapist how can you be um an artist and have your feet in in science as well so there's all these conflicts mm -hmm. how can you be happy about something but be sad at the same time and it's something that I've come back to a couple of times that it just everything seems to be lining up and it's mm -hmm. all pointing me in this direction of this cyclical circle, the metaphor. I guess it's just something that I, I know that I still need to explore. It's really personal. I don't know mm -hmm. what's going to come out, but it will be really interesting to see what does happen. So I've done a huge U-turn. You know, I was like, Tamara, I'm definitely not doing it. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, yes, I'm, I'm doing, doing it. <laughs> So for those yeah, of yeah. us who, who haven't done the 100 day project, me, um, is it is it something that you commit to every single day or in your case, Sue, you're kind of coming up with a modified version, but 
is is the idea to produce something um, along the line of the focus or the intention that you set for 100 days straight? I think so. Um, but I think on the website it said, you know, for everybody who's doing it, to keep it really simple so it's achievable. Mm -hmm. So you're basically not setting yourself up to fail from the beginning. And I think from the things that I've read, I mean, I think it's the ninth year that people are doing it this year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think you can pretty much do it how you want to. I read mm -hmm. something today for somebody who is, um, she's doing 100 days of not taking on anything new. Oh, I, and you suggest that I try that, but I'm like, and some I think Bonnie Bonnie now Bonnie sent me an email saying you should try that, sign up for that. I'm like, no, I can't not do some, do something new for 100 days. <laughs> that's, over, that's like three months plus, right? That's too <laughs> that long. That's too yeah. long. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We're having lots of people say that they did it last year and they needed to do small bits or maybe only do a little bit. And I think the take home is, you know, do what serves you. If if you want to get something out of a project like that, think about the best way to engage with it so that you get mm -hmm. what you want out of it, as opposed to just being exhausted by week three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, watch this space. Hopefully I'll not be exhausted by week three, but you never know. Well, you know, some people take on really big projects, you know, like painting, doing a painting every single day. Wow. I, well, Huge. we talked to Kirsty Matheson and that yep. actually worked for her, but she said it was, she didn't know what she was biting off when she, mm -hmm. <laughs> when she made that, um, that commitment, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So body saying you can change what you're doing kind of midstream. So it doesn't, you don't need to do a hundred days of circles if all of a sudden, triangles <laughs> appear to be more right uh, you know all of a sudden that becomes a more important yeah uh, or the circles of, lead you in some other direction right yeah. you just you yeah. got to be open yeah. to that as Absolutely. well and i know somebody um i think it's susan mccreevy i don't know whether either of you mm -hmm. follow her she's an artist in scotland and she breaks it down into five lots of 20 days right so, so she does chunks. it that way and yeah. maybe yeah yeah, you can I like that. mine with I did it last year and I spent five minutes a day. I spent a lot of time thinking about what the project was gonna be and I made one painting by the end of it. And but it taught me a lot about value and design and all of the art to life principles because I had just yeah. done the free workshop and I, I did that with a very limited palette and a very limited idea of what I was gonna do. And it actually turned into quite a powerful piece by the end. So mm -hmm. you know, choosing I think choosing the right project is what can help set you up for success for those longer term challenges too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's what I'm hoping that it, I will learn. Not Maybe it's less about the doing, but it's more about what I'll learn and maybe learning mm -hmm. stuff about myself. Because yeah. I'm going through this coaching process at the same time mm -hmm. to help me with my mindset and these limiting beliefs that I place on myself and these rules that are like non-existent, but they're just in my head. So maybe I'll just be in a better place myself at the end of it. And if I make some artwork along the way, then brilliant but if I don't and I just make lots yeah. of circles then but still right. yeah well, I think that's that's pretty amazing and um, are you doing them on paper like just sort of small sketchbook kinds yeah of... so I made this you have this one or a couple yeah um she probably has a whole sketchbook that she's going to dedicate to them right <laughs> well <laughs> <laughs> now that you she says <laughs> sketchbook <laughs> queen I'm working across three sketchbooks, so I've got them all here next to me, but I did find, I was like, I'm sure, so I really love these, um, they're C, C white of Brighton and they're square, so they're probably, what, there's a ruler, so maybe 10 inches square, mm -hmm. and I just, I've got loads of them, and, and I do have one that's got nothing in it at the moment, so that might Perfect. become my... I did think about starting it yesterday and I thought, no, just pace yourself. Don't go rushing in and then burn out. But I did start the other day and I've just made a couple of the images that I shared on Instagram. Um, yes. That was my first one. And it's just mixed media collage, really simple. And I think at the minute, Barb, I think I'm just going to work on paper, but I might mount that on board or I might do some on canvas. I don't really know. I haven't thought that far ahead. Well, you could just keep the circles as the unifying theme and then however you want to work that, that could be done with different media as you go and in different formats and, mm -hmm. you know, and it, it looks like it's not something that's going to be your whole studio practice either. So that's the other thing with a hundred day project. If you choose something, it's going to take you three hours in the studio every day. You can't do anything else, right? No. Yeah. 
And I think realistically, I need something that can be done really quickly. So if I mm -hmm. just want to come in one day and pick up a pencil and draw a circle, mm -hmm. that might have to be it for some of the days because yeah. I do have two other jobs. So it's all about balancing and finding that balance between busy and time, having time. Yes, yeah. Bonnie says, keep it simple is key. Totally agree with you, Bonnie. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So Sue, you must be familiar with the concept of Enzo then. <sighs> I've only just found out about Enzo this weekend. So as part of my work as an art therapist, I do a book group with this amazing group of women and we're working through, it's an environmental art therapy book that um, is called Environmental Arts Therapy and the Tree of Life. And it's a really beautifully written monthly guide um, for it doesn't even have to be art therapists really, but it's it has one chapter a month and it started in November. And somebody I know on Instagram had posted this picture. I'm starting to read this. It starts in November. And I, I thought, I'd quite like to, I've always wanted to read that book. I think I'll buy it. And I said, oh, I might do it with you. And she said, well, how about we have a like a book club? So a few other people, incidentally, that we both knew. So it's all strange how mm -hmm. these Instagram connections form. Um, and everybody kind of knows everybody else or there's lots of intersecting circles um, so as a result we we meet once a month to discuss that month's chapter and I was talking to them on Sunday about the circle and doing the 100 day project because it was day one and they told me about this concept of Enzo so I went off and looked it up and it's a Japanese calligraphy mm -hmm. mark is that right? I don't know much it about it yet. It is. Well, all, all I know is I have a friend who was doing this as part of, um, as part of a counseling program as well. And it's, it's a, a circle that you make without lifting your tool, your calligraphy pen, your paintbrush, whatever, off the paper. And it's supposed to be a very free-flowing, simple motion. And we all make them differently, which is kind of the interesting thing as well. But while you're doing it, you're supposed to be breathing. There's a breathing pattern. And you do it in time to the breathing, the inhale and the exhale. And I can't remember what the counts are on all of that. But I, I believe it's, it's kind of, the idea is the circle is also a breath, right? That's my oh, yeah. understanding of it. It's so one of it's, the many metaphors for the circle. Right. So it's, can, it's also, all, it can be done as kind of a meditation. Oh, yeah. I like the sound of that. Yeah. I like the but sound of that too. I can yeah. choose that. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. If you, well, if you want to look, follow, follow that up. I might look up that again too. I have. Yeah. So Enzo? E-N-Z-O. Okay. Or E-N-Z-O. Sorry. The that is me the... out again. <laughs> I was thinking, okay, that's like Isabel's dog. You're referencing Isabel's dog, no. and so I was thinking, what? Is, no. And no. sorry, the name, the name of the book again, Sue. Someone's asking. I will put it in the show uh, notes. It's, mm. um, it's called Environmental Arts Therapy and the Tree of Life. So it's by an author called Ian Siddons Hagginworth, and okay. I think you can buy it on Amazon, or I think you can buy it direct from his website as well. Okay. And it's just I'll written put the title up. Sorry. I'll put the title up in the show notes. Okay. Um, and like this after. month, one of the um, one of the parts of the chapters was about the safe harbour. About and it was a lot about loss and grief in this chapter because it relates to sort of the time this well February um, and a lot of the themes that seem to come up in the winter are about um, loss and this one was particularly heavy on on that and the grief, but the last part of the chapter talked about making a safe harbour. And I think maybe that's what prompted the piece of art that I made for day one hmm, about that right. protected, yes. protective wall around the boundary around a circle. And, and maybe, yeah, maybe that's my safe harbour. I don't know. Maybe the project is, who knows? Um, I love that. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. Are you going to be, you're going to be, are you going to, find the temptation to overanalyze all your work now that was that's oh. what would happen to me I would you know make it spontaneously and intuitively and then come back and go oh maybe that's what this means well I think as an art therapist I tend to do that we do already we on the image a lot about what it could mean and what it means for the person who's making it and how it felt when and then you could just you we can reflect on all of the different possible meanings that it could have it's so interesting mm -hmm. um so I think I've already started to do that. 
um, in the images that I've made, which aren't many so far, I've just already started to think about the metaphor of them and how it relates to life. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, you think about all the artists who you know and, and you see their work all the time and we all kind of gravitate towards shapes or marks, as you say, that it, it's almost like we're compelled to make them. And then there are other shapes, but it's like, oh, I can't, I can't go there. Um, boy, from an art therapist's point of view, I'm sure you can have some really interesting conversations with people. So I'm thinking circles, yes, I think I could do circles. Ovals and shapes that are a little more organic, those would be tougher for me. So control maybe, or? Yeah, who knows? Yeah. And it would definitely be worth just doing a bit of thinking about mm -hmm. yeah. what it is, what feeling you get when you think of an oval and how does it feel when you make it? And are you looking for that perfection? And yeah, it's... It's rich for exploration. Yeah, the well, books it is, it, would be fascinating to, to look at and get some more It, it gets, gets to that conversation Barb and I have had many times about squares versus oh. rectangles <laughs> yeah. and how we, we both really gravitate towards a square format for our work and how we struggle when we get rectangular or too rectangular. But I don't know if you've noticed what Barb's been working on lately, which is these extreme <laughs> rectangles <laughs> that give me angst when I think about painting on them. Oh, right. What would you say about all that? So, ah, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Shall I lay down on the couch? <laughs> I think both of us are going to have to lie down on the couch and hear this out. <laughs> yes, squares. And I know people who will not work on squares. They just are like, no, they're, you know, because you rotate them and there's no right or wrong way that they should be where in their mind, maybe they think a rectangle goes this way. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so maybe that goes back to or relates a bit to what I've just said about these rules that we um, we yeah. unconsciously place on ourselves of how we live life. Yes. And mm -hmm. sometimes you don't even realise you're doing it. And when you take a step back and start to think, well, why did I do that? And why do I not mm -hmm. think that that looks the right that yeah. you start to unpick? Well, it's because I thought that I should do it that way. So, it, yeah, it just makes you delve yeah. a bit deeper. I love Boy. it. Definitely shapes that offend me and others I just have to repeat in every painting. What shapes yes. offend you? Yeah. I'm curious because offend Give is an a example. very strong word. <laughs> Give an example. Mm. Oh, I'm not sure. I've not thought of which shapes offend me. I just know which ones kind of give me heart palpitations if I think about trying to incorporate something. And I have to trick myself um, using kind of free form shapes it's it's funny because when i move from collage to say creating a mark with a brush with collage i'm much freer as soon as i get something in my hand where i control it it's like nah it's it, it, it can become tighter whereas collage I, a little it's a little I, easier you, you do like your paper cutter for your straight edge i do like you know what <laughs> right before this i was chopping away <laughs> squares don't ask me why I have a pile of squares. I even took a photo of them. It's soothing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's definitely oh. soothing. You're still there. You're still there, Sue. Oh, did we lose? I'm oh. still there. Oh, well, we can hear you. There, there you, you are. are. Yeah, there you I've are. I've disappeared. Something happened and my phone was like, oh, it's time to go off Instagram. Oh, I got rid of that ages ago because it was, kept interfering with, with uh, these. And then I, pressed it. I think <laughs> it once I awesome. pressed it and it's, yeah, I can't remember. I do have to say, though, your theme of circles, I'm going to bring this up because this is another connection that we have. So was it your one of, was it, a, did I win, win something on your website or was it a postcard, one of many postcards? Oh, no, it was a giveaway. It's up on my, it was a giveaway. Well, it yeah. came wrapped in. Look at what's on this tissue paper. <laughs> oh Circles. my God, yes. Yeah. Can I tell you that I have collaged all of that tissue paper except these two little bits <laughs> that I'm holding on to for dear life. They are in all of the paintings that are up on my wall right now. Oh wow. There was, and I don't normally paint circles. I don't paint circles. I paint a lot of chaotic big brush marks with wedges and stuff. And there's something about the order and the size of these. It's circles. nice, eh? It's, it's nice. It's just, it, <laughs> yes, it's really, really, and it's the contrast that I needed to yeah. the other things in my work. So I, I am oh, I'm holding on to this now for another piece. I'm <laughs> glad to be of service. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
well, we should open up for questions. If anybody has any questions they want to ask Sue about her 100-day project, her sketchbooks, um, art therapy, all you need to do is hit the question sticker underneath Sue's scarf and type it in or in the comment box, although sometimes I lose questions if the comments and questions yeah. are flying by too fast. So, whoops, where'd you guys Where'd still you go? See me? Can you now still we see can. Yeah. Oh, right, I can't see myself, but that's, that's better. You actually. can't see yourself? <laughs> No, since that message came up on my phone, it's I've disappeared, but I can look oh, at it. Okay. You're kidding. Oh, we can see you. Okay. We can totally see you. That's okay. Um, so let me ask while you're going on, are you following along with any other workshops and things this week? Or have you given that up too with Jomo? Well, I... <laughs> <laughs> I did get the emails for CVP for the free course, but I'm, I haven't looked at them yet and I'm not sure whether I will. So I might just um, stick with the 100 day project and maybe try not to get distracted by anything else gotcha. and maybe just keep them until maybe one day I might want to look back at them again. Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm yeah. trying. I'm trying not to get overwhelmed by all the stuff because I think like we've talked about you can really fall into that trap of oh it's a free course I want to do yeah, that one I, I want to do that one I want to do that paid one and it can just become too much well and especially right now this time of year seems to be a ton Janie's asking CVP I love that you're asking that because I just assumed it's everywhere that's Nick Wilton's creative visionary program and he talked yep. to us last week about CVP after the free workshop Janie um, so if you go back and watch that one or just check out art to life you'll find it but we had a question from Rena. She wants to know about your sketchbook practice, Sue. Ah, well, I've got many sketchbooks. Um, I've got I've brought a few of them along. I did say, but I, actually, it might be difficult to show you all of my sketchbooks because I now can't see my own camera. But mm -hmm. I was going to. Um, I've got. I've just got loads of them, and sometimes I wonder whether there's safety in the sketchbook. So like if I'm in a sketchbook, I seem to be able to be work more freely, but yeah. then sometimes I get really confined by the size. So whilst mm -hmm. I really love these square ones, they're only 10 inch squared. And mm -hmm. sometimes I'd like to work a lot on a larger format. So whilst I love sketchbooks and I'm working currently across three or four at the same time, because I can't wait for the pages to dry, I'm so impatient, but maybe i need to start to think about how to take that step out of the sketchbook mm -hmm. and maybe yeah. into more resolved work perhaps that is a bit of a problem for me and i'm not sure how to to tackle it yeah yeah do you work on other so is most of your work in a sketchbook or on paper right now do you also work on canvas and board no i've never worked on board um i yeah. would like to because i've seen lots of other people doing it and i know you've mm -hmm. just done a, a gorgeous um series haven't you on board um and I look and I think oh I'd really like to do that but again there's something holding me back I don't know what that is that's interesting you know the thing I love about it so much more than canvas and more than paper mm -hmm. is that have you ever heard of a buddha board it's this white board that um you write on it with a water pen like with you dip it in you, you dip in water you write on it and you can see what you've written and then it slowly disappears so it's very zen. It's my, my kids' therapist had one, and the kids used to fight over it all the time when we were in the waiting room. Oh. Who got to write? On. Yeah, instead of being zen, they Probably were not the fighting goal over it. who got to write on the booth. Yeah, board. They have to divide it into three <laughs> so they could each have a section. Um, but I always I think of panels as my Buddha board. So especially mm -hmm. like the twelve inch ones, they don't have to be finished anything. They mm -hmm. I can paint over them. I can sand off them. Um, and oftentimes when I'm working on a series on larger sizes, I have two or three 12 inch boards going at the same time that I'm practicing my marks and my colors on because you know how it is. The first couple of times you make a mark, it's stiff or it's not right. Mm -hmm. And yeah. if you go right to your big piece, you feel a little more like, you mm -hmm. know, you have to do the right thing. So I, I love board for that. And I, will have, I have pieces that probably have 10 paintings on them because I've worked with, they've used the same board going through multiple series and then, oh, add some gesso, sand it back. Sometimes they turn into really interesting things, but most of the time they're just like a, something that I can erase when I'm done. And I love the firmness and the, the texture of working on them. So that, mm -hmm. that might be a way for you to kind of free up in your mind of working yeah. on a substrate like that. 
Yeah, because well, it is a mindset thing for me. I'm sure that the sketchbook is the safe place, it's the safe harbour, the boards yeah. are scary. Um, so maybe I just need to do that and maybe buy three and just think, right, these aren't going to be anything. I'm just going to get used to the substrate and painting on it and then I can paint yeah. over it and it doesn't matter. It's it's going back to that thing from Louisa's course, isn't it, about um, about playing and I think sometimes we can get yeah. so caught up, can't we, about the end product and I want it to look this way. And really, that just shuts everything down. Absolutely. I have got a couple of questions. I'm just going to pull up and see what we have. Oh, um, so Doug's asking, what is art therapy? He says, I know that my art is therapeutic and meditative, in fact, but I think he's curious as to what an art therapist does. Mm -hmm. Is that correct, Doug? What do you do as an art therapist? So you you do it's psychotherapy. So you're qualified as a psychotherapist, and but instead of using words as the mode of communication, you use the art materials. So you dialogue through the image, and work through okay. things through the image. And a lot of the because it's because of the way it works in the brain, a lot of unconscious stuff can come out in the image that then brings it into consciousness and which you can then talk about. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking earlier when you were talking about shakes about the triangle. So they quite often say that in art therapy, there's a triangular relationship between the client, the um, art therapist and the piece of art. So that's mm -hmm. like the, you yeah. kind of, it's a like, yeah triangular relationship where you mm -hmm. can both reflect on the artwork together and right. ask questions about it so it's therapy but it just rather than yeah it just uses a different mode of communication although we do talk but um it's it's concentrating more on the image and what the image brings and what the image can do to, to help the client express or release whatever's inside it's about getting right. the inside out Mm -hmm. So when your clients come to you, they know that you're an art therapist and that's your mode. So are they already, are they artists? Are they people who have already, you know, they don't have that barrier about creation that say a non-artist would? Um, I guess it's a mixture. So some people come and they might think that they want to make some pretty art for their bedroom wall. But really, in my mind, that's not all the art therapy is. It can be really the opposite of pretty because it can be about expressing really painful yeah feelings right. grief loss um or, you know all sorts of trauma um sometimes i think there is a school of thought that if people are what you class as good at art so mm. may, or maybe artists they that might limit them in some way because they might be mm -hmm. judging what they're they're making right. um but i always just tell people you don't have to be good at art all you need to do is be curious and have an open mind and be willing to give it a try and if you don't want to make an image we can just talk instead right hmm. right so um, my only ex yeah i mean my oh, only so much with stuff. A, sorry with an art therapist was uh, with a children's art therapist because when my daughter was quite young and in the hospital after the hospital one of the things that they did was one of the the art therapists and the play therapist would just bring art materials and that's how Mm -hmm. They helped children to process <coughs> difficult experiences in the hospital. Um, mm -hmm. But that was very nonverbal and that's not trying yeah. to, you know, they're not trying to analyze anything for them, but just giving, it's almost like a play. It's almost like a form of play and exploration and freedom to, to let out whatever they need to let out. Yeah. 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 And really we, we don't ever try to either diagnose or analyze what the image means um, in this country. Anyway, it's more about, exploring with the client what it means for them at that particular time mm -hmm. i've got a real tickle in my throat <laughs> <laughs> okay i'm <coughs> a big glass of water yeah what was didn't i one time almost yes i i think i choked on my tea once yes we almost you did had a, we almost had a choking episode live <laughs> we, we've had just about everything happen soon <laughs> okay i don't feel so bad yeah <laughs> i just feel it getting worse and i thought it's going to come out in a minute <laughs> I know, and then, it, then yeah, you can't I'll control it. I'll cough to make you feel better, too. <laughs> um, no, I was just thinking about the whole, the whole notion of art therapy, too, is that you have something tangible. I think when we talk about things, it's like it's, it's, it's in the ether, right? But then when you're pouring your expression, your emotions um, onto a sheet of paper or canvas, it's there. It's tangible. So you can actually remind yourself, yeah. I got that out of my system. Or yeah. this is what that felt like. 
but it's over here mm -hmm. now. So there's a lot yeah. of really cool, um, I don't know, ways to yeah. interpret it. That's so true. Um, and, yeah. and also you can get a real surprise when you put that artwork away and then come back to it mm -hmm. right. weeks or months later. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it takes you back to the day that you made it and it brings all yes. those feelings up. But other times you look at it and you think it's completely changed. The meaning's changed. It's really, yeah. I know that you shouldn't say it as an art therapist, but I always say it's a bit magical. Yeah, I know it's not magic. It's yeah. like it's stacked up with with really strong theories, but it 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 just astounds me. I love it. Yeah, and the experience can feel magical to the person who's coming through the other side mm -hmm. of it, right? Yeah, cathartic, I guess. Yeah, mm -hmm. very cathartic. Very much so. <sighs> and I guess you know, as artists, we're doing our own art therapy. I did mm. years ago when after I'd gone through a difficult period in life and started making art again, and. I didn't realise that I was doing it at the time until I then went and studied art therapy and I was like, oh yeah, in retrospect, that's what I was doing all those years ago myself. Mm -hmm. So we're mm -hmm. all working through something. There's mm -hmm. all inside, stuff from the inside is coming out whenever we make art, yeah. I think. I'm curious to what will happen to, with art historians looking back on the last two years of the oh, art that's been made and if they're going to be able to see like a change in what people were producing. Huge. Like We can't see it because we're inside it. Mm. But from a historical perspective, I think that will be really interesting to see if there's uh, kind of been a collective shift in yeah. what people are making. A lot yeah. of dark colors. <laughs> Mine were very yeah, dark, watery, kind of, yeah. yeah. Maybe yeah. for me, it's been the other way. It's been very light and whimsical because I think that's where I want to go. That's where I am. You know now. what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. yeah. Where I started was very dark. I look at the pieces and it's like, oh my gosh, like this is serious stuff. And now definitely trying to insert more levity and, and fun. Mm. Just yeah. It doesn't have to be so serious. Yeah. It's so interesting. What's, what's isn't Bonnie it? seeing there? She has stacks of books. Oh my own. Mm. Oh, I can't see. I missed that. Hey Steve, how are you? Um, I can't see the comments. They start so, to scroll uh, up. And you said, probably know I'm terrified of touching my screen. I know I'm not touching <laughs> mine. I have stacks of books <laughs> full of it. It's going up full of my own art therapy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You could probably uh, figure it out chronologically too. I could probably line up all my paintings that I've made over the last two years from the first one to the most current. And, and it's like a, it's like a, a graph of what's been going on. Yeah. That, that, you should share it. You should do I was it. Gonna say, Share it. Oh, there's, your, there's, your, there's your next exhibition. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Early COVID, mid COVID. <laughs> Coming out the end of COVID, yeah. 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 yeah, fingers crossed, everything crossed. Oh my gosh, we have to be. Hey, do we have any more questions? We're almost at 45 minutes. We tend not to go that much longer than this. I know it's getting to be bedtime for you, Sue. Yeah. It is. Yeah, I've got work tomorrow, so I'll not. Be, I'll only probably be up another hour or so. I've got a bit of TV to watch, and um, yeah, Absolutely. just some chill time and mm -hmm. uh, a nice relaxing evening. That's great. Well, thanks Absolutely. so much for being with us today. We really enjoyed chatting with you and getting to know you better. And I'm yeah. looking forward to watching the evolution of your circle. Yeah, keep my thanks eyes so open for having me. Yeah. So anybody who's new here, um, you can share screen captures of us right now we're gonna can we go one two three and make a really silly face and then you can screen capture because that's silly. what we love to share right <laughs> silly face. okay shall we do it Get ready okay to screen capture one one two, two three, three. <laughs> there did you get it <laughs> mind you i can find that i can go through the video barb, and find if, the really if nobody else one. posts that barb will post that for sure yeah and i can't see myself so i don't know how i look oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> you Just will soon barb and I. <laughs> check my stories <laughs> well, that's awesome so we'll share in stories and you guys will see the replay. If you're just catching it, if you're just dropping in with us late, we've been on for the last 45 minutes with Sue Bulmer and I will share her Instagram link in the show notes and uh, the, the book title the book that right? she shared. I yeah, it sounds down. so good. Yeah, thank and, you, uh, Sue. So nice to meet you and so interesting yeah. to hear your story. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's been really enjoyable. All good. right. Well, we'll catch you guys later on the ground. Have a great rest of your day. Yep. See you. Bye. See you next week. Bye. Yep. Bye. Bye.